Warning, this video contains spoilers for Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. The Young Avengers are the future of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Throughout Phase 4, Marvel Studios has been teeing up young new heroes to take over some of the MCU's biggest heroic identities. And while the original version of Earth's Mightiest Heroes may have managed to beat Thanos, there's still plenty of villains who are sure to be waiting in the wings for their chance at the spotlight, like Kid Loki, the Masters of Evil, and more. So join me as I take a look at the strongest villains that could fight the Young Avengers in the MCU. Following the Avengers' defeat of Thanos, the MCU is going to need a new overarching villain to continue menacing the multiverse. Enter Kang the Conqueror. He's a supervillain from the 31st century who has decided to travel through the timeline and rule all of time everywhere. His advanced technology and knowledge of future events make him a serious threat to the heroes of Earth, particularly the Avengers and the Fantastic Four. The Young Avengers' backstory is inextricably connected to Kang, to the point that the team is actually led by a younger, more heroic version of him. Basically, he tried to go back in time in order to make himself become a villain earlier, but this actually had the opposite effect and caused his younger self to form the team. The Loki Disney Plus series gave us a sneak peek at the MCU's version of Kang, who will be properly introduced in Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. I don't think it's a coincidence that we're seeing both Kang and the Young Avengers being set up in such close proximity to each other, and I expect him to end up serving as their primary threat. The new Thanos, if you will. Hey, on the other hand, not everybody can be a multiverse conqueror. While big time guys like Kang and Doctor Doom may be more popular and marketable, there's no denying that the Marvel Universe was built on the back of C-listers. Without villains like Big Wheel, Asbestos Man, and the Wrecking Crew, the universe just wouldn't be as fun and colorful as it is. Speaking of the Wrecking Crew, they would be perfectly suited for an MCU debut. The group, which consists of four construction-themed villains, have fought dozens of other superheroes over the years, though their primary opponent is Thor. They've never really had any major beef with the Young Avengers, but hey, Shang-Chi wasn't the Mandarin's son in the comics either. With the way that the MCU is set up, sometimes changes have to be made to character interactions and backstories, and the Wrecking Crew could make for great bruiser types to help demonstrate the Young Avengers' strength. They also have the potential to serve as fun recurring villains who could pop up in different corners of the MCU, similarly to characters like Batroc or Claw. Oh wait, they're both dead. Please stop killing off your villains, Marvel. I'm begging you. With characters like the Skrulls hanging around the MCU, you really can't trust anyone. And no, I'm not just being speciesist when I say that. And now you have officially carried it too far, buddy. In the comics, the shape-shifting green aliens launched a massive secret invasion of Earth, in which they captured and replaced a number of our heroes as part of a plan to take over the planet. Captain Marvel introduced the Skrulls to the MCU, and while they may have been a bit less outwardly hostile so far, the fact that we have a secret invasion Disney Plus series coming up doesn't really bode well for our relations with them. We don't know when exactly the secret invasion show will be releasing yet, but it'll probably happen before we have a full-fledged Young Avengers in the MCU. With that being said, there's still a great opportunity to have the Skrulls face off against the up-and-coming heroes in the aftermath of that show. I could see an organization like S.W.O.R.D. recruiting the Young Avengers to hunt down the Skrulls who are still left on Earth in the wake of their Empire's defeat. This would also open the door for the introduction of Young Avengers member Hulkling, who's actually half Skrull. All the pieces really fall into place well here, and it would be pretty smart of Marvel Studios to take advantage of the Skrulls' power and show us just how they stack up against the MCU's new class of heroes. While Black Widow provided an interesting glimpse into Natasha Romanoff's personal life and solo adventures, the film ultimately failed to deliver a compelling villain. General Drakov was incredibly forgettable, and Taskmaster was such a departure from her comic book counterpart that a lot of fans have demanded a more accurate version of the character come back to the MCU. In the source material, Taskmaster is a wisecracking yet incredibly deadly mercenary who frequently goes up against the Avengers while working for the Marvel Universe's various villains. Obviously, that's a pretty far cry from Black Widow's silent and brainwashed assassin, but considering the fact that she was freed by Natasha at the end of the film, there's a real chance we could see her undergo some serious character development and return in a more familiar form in the near future. As I previously mentioned, Taskmaster primarily fights the Avengers, so it would make sense to have this new version of the character face off against 
their successors. With her incredibly deadly skill set, Taskmaster would prove to be a formidable foe that could honestly probably take on all the Young Avengers at once. However, given how Black Widow ended, there's also a distinct possibility we could see her reform and join the team, which would honestly be much more interesting than just making her a straight out villain. Since Yelena seems to be kind of busy with the Dark Avengers, Taskmaster could serve as the team's Black Widow stand-in. She's just gotta get that superhero landing pose down. The Young Avengers may be great heroes, but the real question that everyone is asking is, are they true gamers? That's a question that only Arcade can help us answer. As the creator of the Death Trap filled theme park murder world, the redheaded villain has frequently put the Avengers through some harrowing scenarios, and it's a shame we haven't gotten to see him yet in the MCU. Arcade would be a much more bombastic and theatrical villain than we're used to seeing in the modern comic book movie landscape and his theme park provides plenty of opportunities for cool stunts and action scenes. Murder World could serve as a great location to showcase the Young Avengers' strengths, both separately and as a team, and the villain himself would bring some much-needed chaotic energy to the MCU's rogues gallery. Yeah, I love Scarlet Witch too, but it's undeniable that, as of Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, she's officially broken bad. You really can't blame her too much for losing it, especially considering how many terrible things have happened to her over the last few years, but at this point, she very well may be the most powerful and dangerous character in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Wanda's main goal throughout Multiverse of Madness was the retrieval of her sons, Billy and Tommy, who just happened to be two of the Young Avengers' core members. While the film ended with Wanda seemingly dead, and her children remaining in their own universe, there's no doubt in my mind that the Maximoff kids will come back and take up their comic book identities of Wiccan and Speed. As such, it's only a matter of time until Wanda returns as well, and I'm sure that the events of Multiverse of Madness won't have helped her mental state. Seeing Billy and Tommy go up against their own mother would be tragic, sure, but they're also probably the only ones that could pull her back to the side of good. Just let the poor woman have a family, for God's sake. Speaking of which, we also don't know where White Vision is. He just flew off in the last episode of WandaVision, didn't say where he was going or anything. He's got all his memories back, but seemingly none of the emotions that come with them, and there's plenty of dramatic potential to be mined there in terms of potential interactions with the other members of his family. I found it pretty surprising when White Vision didn't show up in Multiverse of Madness, especially considering how much the original Vision meant to Wanda. Because of all this, I have a feeling that the Marvel team has some sort of grand plan in motion to reunite their family and set up Billy and Tommy's membership in the Young Avengers. I just just hope that it doesn't entail the kids having to take down their own mom. You know we had to have at least one Hydra member on here, because those guys will just never go away. Out of all the Hydra agents we've seen so far in the MCU, I put my money on Arnim Zola being the one to come back and oppose the Young Avengers, for two main reasons. First off, he was the one to bring Hydra into the 21st century after World War II, so it would be appropriate for him to continue on this legacy and help them stage another comeback. And second of all, I will not rest until we see that crazy robot body on screen. Hydra's already proven themselves to be pretty resilient, but Zola in particular seems like he can withstand pretty much anything you throw at him, in large part thanks to his digital consciousness. With the Avengers seemingly in disarray after Tony Stark's death and Steve Rogers' retirement, it would be a great time for Zola to step up and lead Hydra in another attempt to take over the world, only to be taken down by the Young Avengers. The young heroes finally taking down Zola would mark the end of a loose end not even the original Avengers could tie up and it would send a powerful message to the villains of Earth that no matter what happens, there will always be heroes around to stop them. The Masters of Evil are one of the most iconic villainous teams in all of Marvel, and it's criminal that they haven't appeared in the MCU yet. They're basically the evil version of the Avengers, consisting of some of their greatest foes like Baron Zemo, Black Knight, Claw, and many more. Like we mentioned earlier, the MCU's got a bit of a problem with killing off their villains early, so if they can just resist that impulse for the rest of Phase 4, we just may end up with a pretty reasonable lineup for the Masters of Evil. I've said it before and I'll say it again. It's shocking to me that Marvel Studios hasn't given us a proper villain team up yet. A lot of that does ultimately come down to their aforementioned killing off of villains, but when you've still got folks like Zemo, Abomination, and Ghost kicking around, it feels like the stories should write themselves. Having a team of several established villains as opposed to one new singular looming threat would change up the story dynamics considerably and generally help to make our antagonists more interesting. Alternatively, there's also a version of the team specifically geared towards fighting the Young Avengers called 
Well, the Young Masters. They're a group of teenagers who have taken up the identities of several iconic Marvel villains, and they've popped up a few times in recent years with an ever-changing lineup. It would honestly be pretty cool to introduce this younger incarnation of the group into the MCU to put them on a more level playing field with the Young Avengers. This way, we could watch these younger villains grow into their identities, similarly to how we've watched some of the newer generation of heroes, and it would help audiences relate to them a bit more than if they were just a bunch of angry adults trying to fight teenagers. Well, when you say it like that, it sounds downright pathetic. He was the Avengers' first major villain, and now there's a very real possibility that Loki will also go up against the Young Avengers, though under slightly different circumstances. The last few episodes of the Trickster Gods Disney Plus series introduced us to a number of his variants, including a version of him that was much younger. This kid Loki proved to be a major favorite among fans, and the MCU bigwigs have suggested that he'll pop up again soon. The comic book version of Kid Loki was a reborn version of the Trickster who ended up joining the Young Avengers. While his teammates didn't fully trust him at first, considering the fact that he's, well, Loki, he eventually proved himself to be a valuable member of the team. Because of this backstory, as well as his previous MCU appearance, I think it's pretty much a guarantee that we'll see Kid Loki in some capacity when the Young Avengers finally form. I do think that he'll probably start off as a villain that the team fights, but he'll eventually become a hero, similarly to his main counterpart. I killed Thor. Ah, he's just a kid. He'll grow out of it. Considering the fact that Kid Loki comes from another universe, I also think that he could be the element that allows the Young Avengers to continue exploring the multiverse. After the death of He Who Remains, Kid Loki could escape the void and start looking for ways to return to his own world, no matter what. This could also bring him into contact with America Chavez, though obviously they'd have to find ways to differentiate his quest from Wanda's in Multiverse of Madness. Still, there's a lot of stories to tell with the Trickster God's lost younger variant, and I would expect him to be significantly involved in the future of the MCU, especially when it comes to both the Young Avengers and Loki Season 2. Then again, I thought for sure that Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man was going to show up in Doctor Strange 2, so take my words with a bucket of salt. Our next entry on this list is a brilliant and seemingly mild-mannered scientist who, when provoked, turns into a big rage monster at the drop of a hat. That's right, I'm talking about Mr. Hyde. What, did you think I was talking about someone else? Smash you! Scientist Calvin Zabo was obsessed with the book The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, and seek to recreate its events in real life. Unfortunately, he got more than he bargained for, and found himself subject to frequent transformations into the monstrous Mr. Hyde, a form in which he has various superhuman abilities. Mr. Hyde's another one of those villains who doesn't have a strict nemesis, which allows him to show up all over the Marvel Universe. He has tangled with the Young Avengers in the past, when they stopped him from selling his Hyde formula as a street drug, and this fight would make for a great action scene in a Young Avengers movie. There's no way the team would be able to beat him individually, so it would be a good showcase of their teamwork to watch them work together to bring him down. Oh, and we're just gonna forget Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.'s version of the character, cause that opens a whole new can of worms that I'm not even remotely ready for. Sorry Kyle MacLachlan, I love you. I hope he's perfect. Isn't that the truth? After suffering some brutal defeats at the hands of Daredevil and the Hawkeyes, Wilson Fisk is going to need to make some pretty big moves to re-establish himself as the kingpin of crime. While I would honestly prefer to see him take on Tom Holland's Spider-Man, it would also be fitting to have him fight the Young Avengers. While the version of Kingpin from the Hawkeye series wasn't a terrible adaptation, there were certainly some creative liberties taken in order for him to match the MCU's heightened reality. Instead of being the deadly serious crime lord we all knew from Daredevil, he was out here ripping doors off cars and tanking explosions. Another appearance could really help to flesh out Fisk's character in the MCU proper, and since Haley Steinfeld's Kate Bishop is pretty much a lock for the Young Avengers lineup, Marvel could very easily do a storyline in which his desire for revenge causes him to cross paths with the team. This would give them a legitimate threat, who's already pretty well loved by fans. And considering Fisk's tendency to hire other villains to handle his dirty work, his appearance could also open the door for the introductions of other villains on this list, like the Wrecking Crew or Taz. Taskmaster. In turn, this could also allow the team to cross over with heroes like Echo or Spider-Man, helping them stake their claim to the title of Earth's new mightiest heroes. Come on. Even if you liked Avengers 2, you gotta admit that the quote-unquote Age of Ultron was pretty limp. More like the week and a half of Ultron. The comic book version of the nefarious steel synthesoid is one of, if not the, greatest villain the Avengers have ever faced. And while he definitely was a serious threat in the MCU, I don't know, I just could never take him that seriously. Maybe it's because he couldn't go 10 seconds without cracking a joke. Nobody has to break anything. 
Clearly you've never made an omelet. Neither have you, bro. You're a robot. The What If series provided us with a glimpse at what an unstoppable force Ultron has the potential to be. But if they end up bringing him back to the MCU, it would feel inappropriate for him to just go God Conqueror mode right away. Instead, they should play the long game, with the sinister AI slowly but surely gathering enough power and influence to ensure his return. Maybe in order to accomplish this, he could be the one to put together the Masters of Evil, as a tribute to the comic story in which Ultron formed his own version of the team while disguised as the Crimson Cowl. Age of Ultron basically basically depicted him as Tony Stark's moody teenage son, so the opportunity to have him interact with the Avengers' true successors feels just too good to resist. <laughs> wow, we're done already? Guess time really flies when you're talking about cool supervillains. I'm Matt Sonic, and I had a ton of fun making this video for you guys. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel, and as always, thank you for watching.